today yes, and how you brought yes. us this far, giving us mercy and giving us strength and giving yes. us health. Let us see another day. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all that you've done. We ask you to bless each and every heart that is here. Those who are not here, those who are sick and afflicted, wherever they may be. Touch those in countries where there is war, rumors of war, death, and suffering. Yes, we ask you to touch those countries right now. Yes. All along our border where cartels and evil is lurk, lurking. We ask that you touch those places. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless the word of God today. Yes. Yeah. Help us to give to your people what you've given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Our scripture. Familiar scripture. John 13, 34, 35. A new commandment I give you. I'm reading from, you know, uh, there's an NLA. They got so many, so many, too many abbreviations for me. The Bible. <laughs> a new commandment I give to you, mm -hmm. that you love one another. Yes. As I have loved you. Yes. That you also love one another. Mm -hmm. By this all will know you are. that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. The word. You may see it. It's been a, been a trying week. So I'm, I'm going to give you as best as I can give you on today. And sometimes you have, I don't have too many of them, but once in a while you get one of those weeks where it looks like nothing. I mean, like nothing is positive. It's just like uh, there's negatives on every side. And, uh, I'm, I'm not a stressful person. I don't stress very easily. But this has been one stressful week. Uh, but God has brought us through to today. Yes, yes, yes. And he'll bring you through your stresses right. today. Yeah, right. Sister, Sister Eleanor, I'm sorry. Because she asked me, she said, I hope Brother Calvin preached about a nap. I heard you when you said that. And then I want you to go back into the archives of pastor's ministry and you'll find a sermon in there that he preached 40, 45 years ago, a long time when he was young. He said, this is not your rest. Yeah. It, I remember that. This is not your rest. So talk to him about that now. <laughs> I, think, I think often about uh, my dad. Uh, he used to run up and down when we'd get in the car me and all of us, we'd get in the car, we'd run up and down between here and Los Angeles and, and, and one church to another, Fresno, Bakersfield, Tulare, Merced, wherever he decided we had to go, that's where we went. But there was a preacher, uh, a preacher that was always looking for him. He, he, he said he heard that dad was in L.A., so he went to L.A. to try to, he couldn't find him in L.A. Dad had, he did what he had to do to go home. Went to Bakersfield and different places, and he always missed him by a few hours. But he caught up with him one time. I believe we were in uh, 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 what's the preacher name? Cecil. Yes. Cecil Stern. We was at his church. And he caught up with that. And he said, the Lord had me chase you all over this state to tell you to take a nap. And you know what we did? We went out and bought him a lazy board. <laughs> and every day he loved his lazy board, lazy boy, and he got in his lazy boy and took him a nap. So, so Eleanor, I hope you got a lazy boy at home. Sit in that bad thing and don't turn on the football game because you get you won't rest. <laughs> but get your rest. Ah, convincing. Convincing. How do we convince people? How, what is it that we as a church, not just here on the corner, but as a church, as a people who say we love God, how do we convince people? You have all over the country mega congregations of mixed up, don't know what is right, left, or up or down about Jesus Christ. They don't know about Jesus. And I'm not, 
I'm not condemning other churches. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not being preached like this says. Yes, yes. The pastor alluded to it. We have division all over our country. We have, you got those who think on the left, those who think on the right, and those who think up and those who think down. You got all kinds of thinkers, all kinds of people with all kinds of ideas. There are people who are sitting in your job and around your community wondering if they should go out, as he said, go out and shoot somebody. I listened to a newscaster this morning who said, he said, uh, 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 we need to stop worrying. Our kids are worrying when they walk out the house. Will I get back home? When I could, at least some of us, <laughs> you young ones may not think that, but when we were kids, all we thought about was if he beat me up, I would, uh, and we go shake hands and be friends. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to worry about if you get mad at John, everybody come, they go, they come in the classroom and want to kill everybody because he's mad at John. Mm -hmm. But how do we convince people that Jesus is love? Jesus is love, yes. Oh, I, 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 let, me, let me find it. I, got, I, got, I, found, I put it on my phone so I can read it to you. There was a songwriter who wrote a song that said, think of your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, yes, yes. put a little love in your heart. Mm -hmm. You see it's getting late, oh please don't hesitate, mm -hmm. put a little love mm -hmm. in your heart. And the world would be a better place, he repeated yes. that, it'll be a better place yes. Yes. with a little love yes. in your heart. Oh he says, for, for just it's for you and for me. Yes. It'll be <laughs> just a little love. But the best way to convince people that Jesus Christ is active today, some respond to arguments that people get in. I, I don't. My dad used to teach us, don't get in religious arguments. I don't get in them. When they start talking religious, when I used to go to barbershop, <laughs> they get in those religious arguments. I, 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 you don't know me because I'm not getting in it. Right. Other believers, when they learn of God's love and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, they, 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 they're inspired when they hear about it. Oh, God loves you so. Because see, a lot of people just don't have no love. That's right. That's right. They don't, I mean, they don't have any love. They can, live, they can be sitting in, in a house full of folks and, and, and don't feel love in that household. Huh. And some of us don't want to believe in God's love until they see, see it for themselves. There's a lot of metamorphosis like they, 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 they just don't believe it. They, they, he, God don't love me. When they see God love, that's when they kind of pick it up. They have to see it. So, what does the church have to offer such people? They answer. You want to know this? You. Right. You. That's it. You are the example and the reflection of God's love. That's it. The church should be a co real compelling argument for Christ. It's, if we don't do it, That's nobody right. else will. That's right. Nobody else will. And, and, and you look at, you look at every, every commercial on TV, every, every commercial that you see, whether it be cornflakes, popcorn, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, yeah. Dr. Pepper, they promote themselves. Right. And you believe they're good to eat because they said so. That's right. yeah. I think about years ago, we, years ago we had a, a y'all, some of you are old enough to remember that coming. Right, you remember Rodney Allen ripping? Y'all remember Rodney Allen? Is it too big to eat? I think that was that Burger King or Jack in the Box, one or two, but they had big old hamburger. And, and you was convinced that that, that that was the hamburger to go buy because Rodney Adams Rupert said, man, that's so good, it's too big to eat. <laughs> this stuff is so good, so too yeah, good, yeah. too big to eat. It's just just just, just good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> what you say? What's this what's to say this boy? She said, 
the Campbell soup commercials and mm, good. And you know what? You know what? When we was kids, I don't know about Steve because he was younger than that. But we, me and Allison Dean, we used to say, mmm, good. <laughs> Mama would take that chicken soup a camel and fix it up and throw a little this and that in. We'd take that spoon, we'd look at each other and say, mmm, good. Because it was good. <laughs> Can't you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Huh. I'm getting there. I may not be the longest. I'm being short like Pastor was last week. But Jesus said, by all men will know that you are my disciples if you love yes, yes. one another. Each other. Yeah. And he, he said, he said Brother Pippa can pray for me. <laughs> just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put these up unless Brother Mark just feel like it. John 13, 35, Acts 17, 20, 21, Philippians 2, 14, 15. All those proclaim the scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way we treat each other should testify to our identity right, right. with Jesus. Our love should compel people to believe in his love. Mm -hmm. I think I told you all about the story when Sister Felicia was in, 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 in uh, Mexico and the lady had the cancer, a big tumor out of her side, and, and, and Felicia followed her down to the, down to the square, began to pray for her and, 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 and touch that tumor and put money in her hand, bought her food and all that kind of stuff. And the people looked at it and said, she's Christian. She's a Christian. They didn't ask. They didn't ask. Uh, are you? They didn't recognize the fact that this person who's doing that is a Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our work should be able to be recognized yeah. by everybody else what we are. Right. Nah. <laughs> every now and then, every now and then, people make you want to slap them upside the head. Excuse me. <laughs> People do some crazy stuff. They get in your face. They talk about you. They 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 they, they, they abuse you, and, and they make you just want to get pie out. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. Yeah. <laughs> People do some crazy stuff, but what you do in reaction to that crazy stuff tells them who you are. Uh -huh. It tells you. Uh, so what we have here, how we describe this, should un get us to understand what a Christian is all about. Huh. I'm, I, 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 I love the Lord, y'all. And, and like I said, this was one of those weeks where I had to say, I love the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, but within uh, uh, the fellowship of those who are bound by the loyalty of Jesus Christ. The relationship of love reaches a closeness like nothing else. Yeah. You see, Steve and I are brothers. Yeah. You know, we have brotherly love one for another because not only because we love each other, but, but, but there's another bond, there's a blood bond. Mm -hmm. But you know, when Sister Pierre is saying, Sister Lois is saved. Sister Cooks is saved. Lil is saved. Oh, Sister Smith is saved. Sister Brown is saved. Do you know we love each other in a different kind of way? Right, right. And do you know we we feel each other. When you come to church, you can look over at the saints of God and you say, you know what I mean? I know that's the way I was brought up. The saints, the old saints used to be able to just get up out that seat and walk over there and just touch you and say, God bless you, I'm praying for you. They do that because they could feel your pain. They didn't know what you went through. They didn't know that there was a husband problem. They didn't know there was a child problem. They didn't know there was anything going on on your job. They just knew by feeling. Yeah. And, 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 and see, a lot of y'all don't know Mother Thomas. Mm -hmm. Mother Thomas could feel you, your spirit. Right. She could feel your and, and if you did something wrong, you tried to figure out a way to go to the bathroom. And I'll tell you, you want to leave the church. Because Mother Thomas could be over with her eyes closed, saw more with her eyes closed spiritually than, than, than most of you people see with your eyes open. She, she'd come right to you and, and, and she would pray for you. She wouldn't slap you on the head, she'd pat you on the head and, and pray for you. 
Because she is that love. That's right. That Jesus love down inside led her to your problems. And when you left there, you felt better because you know you, if you didn't feel better, there was something really wrong with you. Because when Mother Thomas prayed for you, you, you ready to go to heaven. <laughs> Say thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Huh. But it's the closeness when the saints love each other. When you get saved, you, you, you know, that's why saved people you hug each other and, and love on each other and, 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 and want to be around each other. You don't want to be around a lot of crazy folks. And other folks. You, you can't wait to, sister, as Sister Lee said, can't wait to get to church when your back stop hurting and your legs and your knees yeah. stop hurting. All those aches and pains of your boss beating you upside your head all week. That stuff leaves you when you get to the house of the Lord yeah. because you can feel the love of Jesus yeah. Christ when you walk in the door. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's my Savior. Yeah. Huh. Where is it experience? Our relationship, it, 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 it should cross. It should cross. Church's relationship should cross all barriers of race, nationality, language. And the pastor said it down. But, you know, you, you see folks and you say, well, what's he all about? But you don't know what that person is all about. That's right. I, I, I think I've used this example again before. The brother came in the church. Bishop Bishop was sitting up here at that time. We used to use this platform a lot. And uh, uh, the brother came in, and he sat back there with Brother Ben in. And uh, he was dressed kind of bad. And you could tell he hadn't had a shower in a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was first on Friday night, so, so he sat at the end of, uh, at the, end of the service. Bishop 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 says. See, we thank God for the brother that's here tonight. And God bless you, son. And so he said, can I say something? And, you know, everybody kind of, oh, what's he, what's he going to say? The brother got up was so eloquent. He began to quote Shakespeare. He quoted Langston Hughes. He quoted some of the best poets that you can think of. And he said, but that's my time. He said, I just want to give that to you here. He said, this is what I am. And when he left, we never saw him again, but he, he, you could tell he was back there. And, but he was, he, his heart was full of what he had to give out to his fellow man. Mm -hmm. Love. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know you. He's never seen us before. But he had something in his heart he wanted to give the church. Yeah. God, you, we, we don't know who's going to give us some good stuff. We don't know. We, now, again, you know, you, you come to me with uh, a 38, 9-millimeter, AR-15, 16, I'm going to run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, this is a sad Y'all ever look at the TV and the guy pointing the gun at the guy and they, and they stand there? I thought, no. It's time to run. <laughs> the monster come and everybody standing there looking at the monster come. And they just stand and look, I'm going to run. When the devil walk in the door, I'm going to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you and go out the back door. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I'll be real. Because when Satan come in, you do not want to be when he going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if y'all agree with me or not. Again, you can stand up here and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you a whole lot in his face. If you're not prayed up, the Bible will let you know you've been prayed up. This, this come, these come out by fasting and prayer, it says. If you ain't fast and pray, don't try to confront the devil. Leave him alone. Amen. Am I telling y'all the truth? Amen. I'm trying. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Huh. It is right for us to expect unity and love in our churches. Mm -hmm. yes. It's misguided belief that reconciled relationships are possible between people who have been re reconciled to God. In other words, when you've been reconciled to God, you know that it's got to be, if you get God is in your life, there's got to be some love in there. There's got to be some real stuff in there. Yeah. And I know, you know, it's bad if you get a soda. I like, I like ginger ale. We drink ginger ale in the house. And, I, and if I drink any other thing, if I drink a, a cola, I drink Coca Cola. And you remember Coca Cola used to say? It's the real thing. What, what you laughing about, Sister Lee? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? I want the real thing. <laughs> Give me the real thing. I don't want no, I don't go, I didn't, when I was a kid, I didn't buy RC, I didn't buy Pepsi, I bought Coca-Cola. Because Coca-Cola said it was the real thing. But boy, let me tell you something. I want the real thing. Jesus Christ is the real thing. What he puts out in your life, it's the real thing. It's real. Can we say praise the Lord? <laughs> when followers of Jesus learn to honor others above themselves and humbly serve one another, people receive a living presentation of God's love. When you serve others. See, see, see I don't, you, no, you don't need to serve people just to get a tax break. You don't need to serve people just to get your name in the newspaper. But you serve people because God put something inside of you to serve people. Yes. What is that called? Love. Love. Hey. God is good. Yes. Such love isn't focused on much nowadays. It's always about if I love you, what's in it for me? If I give to you, what's in it for me? What am I going to get? You know, it, 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 that's, not, that's not showing God's love. So if you can show God love and you give to God's people and then you, you do what you have to do and you get going to the next, next spot. And the next spot may not be when you look for the next spot, but the next spot is where God leads you to. You may, if it's homeless on the street, if it's somebody sitting there on your job that needs help, if it's somebody that, that, that you, your neighbors who you see crying and going through stuff and you give them a help, helping hand, you show that love. And when you show that love, you just get on to the next spot. You don't need praise to give God love. You give God love. You don't need nobody to pat you and say, brother, you sure did a good job helping that brother. You gave 50 cents. Okay, oh, you did a good job. No, you do what God said to do and get going. You show that love. And sometimes you don't even have to give. It don't always have to be about money. Sometimes it's just about just put your, heart, your arm around a person and say, God loves you. And I so do I. And you don't know how that will make a person feel. How they just, just, they get all energized. So where that, where that love is? I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I said, I, I'm going to give you a few scriptures and I'll, I'll, be, um, I'll be just about there. But well, where did that love develop? Ah, oh, 2 Timothy 1 and 9 says, In Christ Jesus, you were given grace before the world was created. He gave his grace in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Oh, well, what you talking about? He gave you some good stuff. He gave you life, health, and strength before he, God knows who you were long before you did. And he gave you, he, we helped him. God gave us strength. He gave us legs to walk. He gave us mouth to eat steaks, if you ever get one. <laughs> but before the ages, he was there. Ephesians 1 to 4, in Christ Jesus, you were chosen by God before creation. God chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world. Oh, he was loving me a long time ago. Long time ago. Romans 8, 38, 39, in Christ Jesus. That's where you find the love I'm trying to tell you. In Christ Jesus, you are loved by God with an inseparable love. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, or nor depth, or anything in all creation will able to separate us from who? The love of God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he loved us. He loved us. And what are we doing? We got to give it back. Huh. Ephesians 1 7. In Christ Jesus, you were redeemed and given, forgiven for all your sins. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of trespasses or your sin. In Christ Jesus. Where do we find all this at? In Christ Jesus. Mahatma didn't give it to me. All, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Confucius and all those guys, they didn't give it to me, but the Bible lets me know in Christ Jesus this happened. Ha. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. In Christ Jesus you are justified before God and the righteousness of God in Christ is imputed to you. 
For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteousness before God. Let me tell you something. Oh, what I'm saying, God set the tone. He set the recipe out there. He put it out there for us to understand in Christ Jesus that what is inside of us. It come out. It come out. Huh. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. In Christ Jesus you have become a new creation and the son of God. If anyone in Christ, he is a new creation, the old have passed away. Behold, the new has come. In Galatians 3, 26, in Christ Jesus, you are sons of God through faith. Oh, if God is love and Jesus is your son, then I got love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you in him, you got to have some of that love that Jesus Christ had. Yeah. Oh. oh, Lord, save my soul. Ephesians 2, 6, in Christ Jesus, you have been seated in heavenly places. Even while he lived on earth, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places. Let me tell you, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you. I, I, some of us older people have been down through the south. And, and during the day when we used to drive down there and we go, the, the main highway would go through, go through the, the black communities. And the houses weren't much bigger than that office or, or, or this square here. And folks would be just sitting out on the porch in the evening time. And, and, and you'd, you'd go by and you'd be saying, Lord, how do they do it? But let me tell you, oh, he blesses us. He took us out of there and put us in heavenly places. Heavenly places. He gave us homes. He gave us nice cars. He put good clothes on your back. He did something for you that nobody else could do. Can't tell me that God isn't love. He loved us so. Yes, sir. He loved us so. He loved us. He loved us. He gave us good sense. He gave us sense enough to learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Two plus two is, is four. Five plus five is ten. He gave us a, he gave us how to learn how to do how to do the you know, which which I failed in such fear. Algebra was not my was not my suit. <laughs> Trigonometry was not my suit. And don't even go into math logic. Was nowhere near me. But, but he gave us good sense of how to do that kind of stuff. Yes. And what he did, he raised us up out of the cotton fields, out of the out of the cane field, yes, and sir. put us in NASA. Yes, he yes, put sir. us in our corporations all over the country. do tell me that if God that, that God ain't love. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, one of the biggest failures in a lot of people is that they think God's supposed to do it right now. And he does sometimes do it right now. But you know, it takes sometimes a little time to crawl. You have, you have anybody ever walk through a swamp? <laughs> You walk, you walk through a swamp, and, 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 and you can't walk through a swamp. <laughs> you got to slide your way through a swamp. You got to slide. You got to get over some hump. That's how you get through a swamp. <laughs> so, 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 so when mankind is in the swamp, it took a little while for us to get out of the swamp. But when God took us in, oh, oh he brought me out of the hole. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out of the miry clay, yeah. set my feet on a rock to stay. God's love. God's love. Hallelujah. Yeah. Almost there. 2 Corinthians 1 20. In Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, all the promises of God are yes for you. All the promise of God is yes in Jesus Christ. Oh, God. He says yes. And once more, uh, Dad used to say, that. now son, every now and then, he'll tell you no. But that no is a yes, because that yet, that no means is more positive for you than, than if I said yes. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. See, sometimes the no is better for you than the yes. So and when he says no, sometimes he's saying that's yes. Because yes, I'm going to make sure that you do all right. No to the, is the situation you acted for, but that no means yes, that you're going to be all right if you don't do what I do that. Mm. Oh, do that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh, praise God. Thank you, God. Huh. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. In Christ Jesus, you are being sanctified and made holy to the church of God that is in Corinth. To those sanctified as you know, oh, all of that stuff, all of the bad stuff you had on you, all of the, 
Oh, when you, when you only had jeans, well, I, I, I can't say that nowadays, because jeans with holes in them cost. <laughs> <laughs> jeans with holes in them cost more than a brand new suit. Right. <laughs> and when some of us years ago, we had holes in your, your jeans, you didn't wear, you didn't want nobody to wear. You went down to the store and bought some of them iron on patches to put on them bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> because you didn't want your friends to know you had holes in these. Now you go out and you pay almost a thousand dollars for a pair of jeans with holes in them. Because somebody put their name on them. So I can't use that for analogy today. <laughs> it don't make much sense. But see, <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. Being sanctified means he'll clean you up and fix you up, give you some good stuff. Yes. Yes. He'll make your insides good. The, 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 your blue jeans of your heart. It, 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 all those holes and stuff that was in your heart against your fellow man. Let me tell you, God will make those holes look good yeah. and make those holes in your heart look expensive and to put out some good stuff from them holes that's in your heart. When none holes in your heart used to be, you put out all kind of curses and swearing and, and, and bad stuff towards your fellow man. He, he fixes those holes in your heart. They may be a little frayed in, in, on, on the edge, but when he fixes it, the, the good stuff comes out of there. Yeah. When you have the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ in your heart, because he'll sanctify your heart. Amen. And the Bible also says, what do you say, you brother Pim? He says, sanctify yourself. Yes, sanctify yourself. Because so when I got saved, I had to, had to, had to, had to sanctify me. Uh, he, he gave me the knowledge of being sanctified, and he sanctified my soul. But when he sanctified my soul, he said, now you got to sanctify yourself. You got to do right. 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 Huh. Holy Ghost ain't make you, he's not going to make you do right. You got to do right. Yeah, yeah. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. Philippians 4:19. In Christ Jesus, everything you needed will be supplied. My God will supply every need according to his riches and glory. Oh, Cattle on a thousand hills is his. My dad used to say, one of them cows is mine. Yeah, yeah. One of them is mine. I don't know which one it is. That found it yet. <laughs> but not, not that one that gonna give me what I, I need, but I think I do. But it's up there. Yes, yes. And they used to say it back in the day, they say, I, I can't wait till my ship come in. <laughs> I don't, I'm still, I ain't seen that ship come in yet. <laughs> I'm waiting on that ship, Brother Pippi. <laughs> See, we live out here on the coast. We don't, we're not, our hills are over here, of course. But, you know, we, we're not just, we, the water's right over here. And I, we was on the, out there on the water yesterday, and I, I looked out there, and I saw one of them container cargo ships come in, you know. And I said, that, that, that could be my ship. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was my ship at all. Something on that ship might be mine. There's a whole lot of stuff on there. I like some of it. One, I'll pray to God. That, 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 there's, there come another ship coming through the Golden Gate of here. I, I, was, I was looking at the ship, y'all. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, just, just about, almost, just give me, give me a couple of minutes here. Oh, Philippians 4 and 7, the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. The peace of God will surpa which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, in, in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you, what's the song we used to say? He's my rock, my sword, my hill. He's my will in the middle of a will. I don't know the rest of it. Yeah, he's that. He's everything. He's, when I need him, yeah. when I need him, I call on him. Yeah. He'll be there. Because if he don't be there, I know that I can just stand firm where I am until he gets there. Because he's my rock. He's my sword. And he's my shield. Huh. Romans 6, 23, in Christ Jesus, you have eternal life. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Oh, see, see, the, what does it say here? But the free gift of God. The free gift of God. I, I don't have to come out with a wallet for it. I, I, I don't have to sell my stuff for it. All I do is just call on him. Yes, yes. Lord, give it to me. Lord, I, Lord, the free gift, give me that love, Lord. And he said, oh, one thing he don't mind giving you a whole lot of, and he'll give you a whole lot of love. He'll give you, he'll just give you, he'll give you a, when he saves you and he fixes you, you know how, 
what's the, what's the song right here? What's the song we just sang? Uh, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. I couldn't keep it to myself, but I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. And, 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 and when you say what you, you just want to hug everybody, just smile at everybody, and do good stuff for everybody, because God did something for you. Some folks can't shout. <laughs> Some folks can't shout. Sometimes folks just say, oh, but when you get the good, you get the scope down. And then some, they get the steps in. Oh, oh, hallelujah. But when he do something, he just put that joy down in your bones. He gets it. What they say, that fire shut up in your bones. And you get the feeling good because... You couldn't keep it to yourself. You get the running. You get the shouting. You get the praising God. Oh, I <laughs> wish Brother Work, Brother, Brother Simon, you got saved. He ran all the way through the doors out there in the middle of the street. <laughs> he let everybody know, I ain't keeping this to myself. Because God did yes, something. Yes, yes, yes. Huh. First Corinthians 15, 22. And in Christ Jesus you will be raised from the dead at the coming of the Lord. Yes. For as Adam, as Adam all died, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. All those who united to Adam in the first humanity die. All those who united to Christ in the new humanity shall rise and live again. Tell me that. Oh, oh how he loved. You and me. And the thing is, we've got to convince other people of that love. We forgive, and we forgive, and we forgive. We love, we love, and we love. No matter what the world do to you, no matter what people do to you, no matter how treat, people treat you, you give back what God gave you. You don't give back what they gave you. You give back what God gave to you. God is love. God gave you love to give out. He didn't give you love to give out hate. He gave you love to give out love. Yes, he did. A lot of people got crazy back in the 60s and they had love. Did y'all remember that? <laughs> they had love. That wasn't God's love. That was flesh. <laughs> but God... Gave us his son. God's love. Is, you see, the son is the father, the father is the son. If God is love, then Jesus Christ is love. And if you're a child, I'm a child of the king. If I'm a child of the king, then if I'm his child, then I've got some of his attributes. One of his major number one attributes is love. Let the church say amen. amen. It's all about God's love. Amen? amen. It's all about his love. You know, I, I don't like this phrase I hear in the church that we often say, the saints don't love like they used to love. Uh, that's a contradiction to everything that is in scripture. Because Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples yes. Yes. is because you love one another. So if a saint does not love like they used to love, then my question is, are you a saint or a disciple of Jesus Christ? Because you can't, there's no, there's no way that you can quantify the love of God just to fit who you are. You love because he first loved you. And his love is complete. Y'all, do you understand that? Yeah. So you need to erase that phrase, the saints don't love like they used to love. My question is, then where is Christ in your life? Because in him is all the fullness of God. Amen? Mm. He preached today. Amen. Let's praise God for the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 My 
wife, my wife always challenges me on, on, on about love. And uh, she feels like when she walks in the door, I've got to run to the door. She says, I'm standing here at the door waiting. I'm waiting for my hug and kiss. And she stands, see, she'll wait at that door until I get, I'm watching my football game. But she wants me to get up and run and kiss her. Because she didn't walked in the door. And, and I don't know what it is about these kisses thing. And so she sits down. I'm going to go to the kitchen and get something to eat. She says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the kitchen. She says, where's my kiss? <laughs> Brother Pipkins, I go out to take the garbage. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm taking the garbage. She says, well, where are you going? Where's my kiss? Amen. In other words, I want you, if you love me, show me you love me. Amen. If you really love me, show me that you love me. We woke up this morning and getting ready for church. She says, where are you going? I said, I'm getting ready to go to church. Kiss me before you go. I'm, I'm, I said, help me, Jesus. Came to church this morning. She gets out the car and I open, she said, open the door. I said, I open the door. And I said, I'm going to close the door. She stands there. I said, she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going. She says, where's my kiss? <laughs> By this shall all men show you got to show that love. Yeah. Am I making sense here? Making sense. God wants you to show. Mm. I was at the national convention and some, I didn't know how much they were watching her. And so when they're making me all of this, putting all of these things on me and making these proclamations about me and whatnot, and so I'm standing in the middle of the floor, and so I have a lot of stuff in my hands, and so she comes up and gets this, and she turns around, and we kiss one another. And so some of the women in the, in, came to me after the service and said, you know what, I wish my husband would show me some, that kind of perfection, but I didn't know how much they were watching her. But you know, it's amazing when you show love, somebody else wants to be like you. Amen. Amen. It's all about love, right? I know that's an exaggeration, but that's all about love. And then she gets on my last sanctified nerve. Amen. But I love her anyhow. <laughs> Everybody sit on your feet. Amen. My prayer for us today as we enter into this week of celebration and thanksgiving is that we show as Elder King said to us today the love of Jesus Christ the only way that men will know about him is through our showing our love to them and being examples of Christ's love I pray that all of you here standing here today including myself will convince people that Jesus Christ loves them by the life that we live amen Amen. For we are his disciples. We are his disciples to love one another. And as we love one another, others will be convinced about his love for them. Amen. So I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, as this message was preached on today, that the love of Jesus Christ will be shown in, and example, as examples in our life, in our witness about you, that we will convince others concerning your divine love through the sacrifice that you gave your own life for them. I pray for those who don't know you today in the pardon of their sins, that they will know how much you love them because of the sacrifice you made, that you shed your blood on Calvary's cross, and I pray, Father God, for each and every one of us again today, that as we leave this place throughout this week, that we will convince men and women, boys and girls in our families, about your great love, so that they too will become disciples of Jesus Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it, and we praise you for it. Thank God. Amen and amen. Let's give God a hand praise.